Welcome to my home. Can't go in right now. Morning everyone, welcome to the channel. I know it's your first time here because it's the first video and uh, thanks for coming over to the channel and taking a look. This is a woodworking channel, although it doesn't seem like it. So what I wanted to do halfway through this process is decide to show people a little bit about what's going on with the house and the wood shop. And um, I figured this is gonna be a lot of people that are interested in why my house is above my head. And I was going to focus on the rebuild of my wood shop. Starting today with a bit of a tour of what's going on. But for those that are mildly interested in why we're doing this, we'll talk a little bit about pyrotite, a little about crumbling foundations, and about the process of what we did. So, hey, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy making these videos. I like doing this kind of stuff. And uh, I'm going to be wanting some feedback from people. So I may ask questions. Please leave a comment. Uh, help me get through this process. And uh, help me uh, figure out ways to make this the best wood shop ever. We moved into this house in 1998, and around nine years ago, we became aware of a problem with concrete in our area. About eight years ago, seven years ago, we started seeing some cracks in our foundation. I'll throw some pictures up while I talk, and you guys can see the house before we renovated and see some of the cracks. Although I only have still pictures of all that. I didn't decide to start videoing until just recently realized maybe seven, eight years ago that our foundation had a problem and that we might be one of the people affected by what's called crumbling foundation. So I called an engineer, he came out and he said very quickly uh, by noticing different cracks in our garage floor, in our mudroom floor behind me, and in our basement floor that our foundation was failing. So in April of this year, we started the process of moving everything out of the house. We didn't have to move the bedrooms and the kitchen and stuff, but we did have to move all the basement, all the garage, all the mudroom out. And then in July, we had to move out. We've been out since July, just about two months, and we're expected to be out for about another month. Uh, and when we're done, we're gonna have new concrete in, under the entirety of our house. I'm gonna give you guys a tour around, and I'm also gonna talk to you a little bit about how we're preparing a new uh, basement for the wood shop. And uh, that's basically where we'll start in how this is a woodworking channel, as much as it doesn't seem like it. 
And uh, anyway, uh, thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoy it. And um, like I said, stick around if you like it. The average ground temperature up in my neck of the woods is 52 degrees in the winter. And that means that my wood shop is 52 degrees. So last couple years, I've been really struggling with trying to get my resins to cure properly and to get my uh, wood to the right temperature for expansion and contraction to finish my projects properly. So we figured once we're getting the basement redone, we might as well do something about that. And so what I got behind me here is um, EPS insulation, two inches of EPS insulation. And um, we're going to show you a little bit closer. Uh, concrete to my house, this 10 inches or so of concrete, only has an R value of 0.1 as I've been led to believe. Might be 0.1 per inch, but I'm pretty sure it's 0.1 the whole thing across. That means all the heat that I got is going straight through my basement. By adding this on here, I'm gonna be bringing my whole wall up to R10, and uh, I will be able to, at that point, keep my house and my basement significantly warmer. I've got a nice Budera spoiler I put in two years ago. And uh, I want to put in a hydronic heater. I keep my wood shop at a nice balmy 68, 70 degrees as I need it. So, first step in building my wood shop back right is this insulation. I had to pay the contractors a little bit extra money to put it in for me. And they actually tried to fight me, talk me out of it. Because uh, they're not woodworkers and they don't do with resins and they didn't have a clue what... Uh, what I was talking about when I said I wanted a warmer basement. And they said, what? Basements don't get that cold up here. It never gets below 52. Yeah, well, anybody that's ever worked with wood, cast iron tools, and resin knows that 52 just isn't going to do it. The insulation required a bit more water movement than it would had we not had any of that EPS on the outside of the house. So we paid money for the insulation, and we paid extra money for some very, very high quality footing drains that will move a lot of water away from the house. Welcome to my wood shop. Oh. Come on in. I'll find a place for you to sit. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely nuts. Makes no sense at all that my house is 20 feet above me. So, uh,. It's not a very big house. Our house is only about a thousand square feet, but we have an unfinished basement and uh, what we've done is moved all the mechanicals out and the laundry out for this process. And so when we move back in, the laundry is going upstairs and the mechanicals are going to be condensed into one corner. Cut out over here is for the chimney. Uh, oil tank, boiler, well tank, water heater is going to be moved to the center. I've got to figure out how to, where I want to put that. And the rest of the space is going to be wood shop. My whole house is supported by beams. To be honest, it's kind of cool when I get to see all this stuff. So we're in the front of the house. This is where most of the work is already done. These are the cutouts where they have to drop the beams above my head. When those beams come down this week, they'll nest into this. When they pull the beams out, then they're going to frame this, form it, and pour some concrete in there. So we're already about six feet above uh, the footings, and you can actually see where my insulation is already in place here. They're going to bring this insulation up to this uh, chalk line, uh, or just proud of it. The deal is that they'll insulate to just below grade. We have a log home. We don't want this insulation to come anywhere near the wood because we don't want any problems with bugs or moisture or things coming through this up into here. So right now, this whole front basement's already got its little R10 in there, almost to the top. And uh, they just put in my sonar tubes for the porch supports. Getting close. I think my favorite part of this whole process is the fact that that's my chimney. You know, for the years leading up to this, we had years we knew this was going to happen. I always wondered how they were going to lift my chimney. It was pretty underwhelming. The truth is, they just stuck some beams under it and lifted the dang thing. I, I thought, oh my God, it's gonna be so complicated. Now, they, day one, they cut holes right through the base of the house and uh, just slid these beams right in. Well, day one, they cut the holes. 
Within a week, they had beams underneath, and within a week and a half from the start date, this house was starting to go up. Uh, I have a video of that I'll throw in here somewhere. It's amazing to see. There are two other houses on our road having this done right now. As I said previously, maybe they 40,000 homes, uh, but our house was um, basically condemned when it was diagnosed as having this. Uh, we can't sell it for full value, and eventually it would cause some serious structural problems. Uh, and apparently it, it compounds quickly, so it may not look bad the first year, and it may not look bad 10 years later, but at some point it just skyrockets in, in how much uh, fracturing it does. And we were getting close because our back wall of this basement was a nightmare. So this is our upgraded uh, drainage system. ADS 3000. Got that put around our house uh, for the footing drains. In addition to our gutters and downspouts, we have a pretty good uh, water collection system now. That's a certainly a, an upgrade over what we had before. Which is a lot of this crap. All right, everyone, I guess that's it. I wanted to thank a few people for the inspiration. I wanted to thank Acorn to Arabella and Steve and what he's done. Building a sailboat he's been building for the last uh, eight or nine years. I've been watching, like most people, since the lead pour days. And... Um, I'll support them any way I can, but also get the inspiration from them. I'd like to thank uh, Matt Cremona. I stumbled across his channel uh, when he was doing a, a co-video with Paul Lemiski from uh, Legacy Lumber up in Canada, and those guys are amazing, and uh, I love their content. So this is all going to be a little bit of the mechanics of how you rebuild a house, as well as the mechanics of how you put a wood shop back together, and then woodworking which is what I plan on doing for the better part of my uh, golden years once I get there, although they're not too far off, unfortunately. So uh, anyway, thanks for coming along. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you got any thoughts that I should consider between now and when I start moving equipment back in, anything I should do first when the basement's bare, anything I should do when the basement's empty, uh, I'd love to hear it. Leave a comment. I only got one chance to rebuild my wood shop properly, and I'd love to find out uh, what you guys think about the best way to do that. At some point, we'll get into dust collection. We're going to get into cabinets. We're going to get into storage. We've got to build a new uh, shop table. I'm going to build a dust-free room for resin pouring. I got to put in my vacuum pump se section. I got to put in my resin section. I got to put in my uh, stabilizing section. I got two lathes that got to go back in. I got a table saw that's got to go. Two table saws that's got to go back in. I uh, got my bandsaw, got all my planer joiners, all that stuff's got to go back in. So if you guys have thoughts on how to do it, let me know. Have a good day. Yeah, might as well show you our little cottage while we're here. This is our COVID project. We didn't uh, design it. We bought the kit from uh, Jamaica Cottage Shops up in, I think it's Vermont. Maybe New Hampshire. But they just dropped a pallet on our uh, in our yard, and we spent the better part of 2020, summer of 2020, building this uh, piece by piece. So it's a pretty good deal. Someone is too excited to be here and not listening to me at all. <laughs>